ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So inshallah ta'ala this evening we will be reading about one of the great scholars and imams of this time from the imams of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah from those people who have been praised and spoken highly of by the great imams of our time with words of immense praise and that is none other than the Allama, the Muhaddith Al-Shaykh Rabi' Ibn Hadi Ibn Muhammad Umair Al-Madkhali Hafidhahullahu Ta'ala and his tribe Al-Madkhali this is a well-known tribe in the area of Jazan in the southern region of Saudi Arabia and it is one of the tribes which belongs to Bani Shubail and or Shabil and that is a part of the Kahtan tribe. Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi Ta'ala was born in Jaradiya, a small village to the west of Samita. And Samita, many of you may know, because that is the city where Sheikh Ahmed ibn Yahya and Najmi Rahmatullah was and where Sheikh Zaid ibn Hadi al Madkhali Ta'ala is currently uh, currently resides in. So Sheikh Rabi' was uh, born in a re- in an area close to Samita, which is currently now, which has become a part of Samita, and that was in the year 1351. Uh, 1351 works out to be approximately uh, 1930. <clears throat> Which means the Shaykh is currently in his early 80s. Hafidhahullah Ta'ala. And his his father died when he was just a year and a half old. So he grew up under the care of his mother. Who gave him a good upbringing upon good manners, truthfulness and trustworthiness. Encouraged him to pray. And he was being looked after also by his his uncle from his father's side, his father's brother. And when the Sheikh reached the age of eight, he began to read how began to learn how to read and write. And a number of uh, teachers I mentioned about that he recited the Quran and read it to Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Muhammad Jabir al Madkhali and he read also books of Tawheed and Tajweed um with that Sheikh. And then he joined the Al Madrasa as Salafiya in the area, the city of Samita after that. And in that school, the Madrasa Salafiya, the Sheikh studied under a number of scholars. From the most famous of them, well known of them, most well known amongst them was Sheikh the Alim Nasir Khalufa Tayyash Mubaraki. And this is from the from the elder and main students of Al Sheikh Abdullah Al Qarawi, Rahimahullah, who is a well known Imam of the Sunnah at that time. And Sheikh Rabi studied with Sheikh Nasir Khalufa Al Mubaraki, Bulugh Al Maram, and Nuzhat Al Nazar of Al Hafid Ibn Hajar. And then after that. He joined Al Ma'had Al Ilmi, which was a, another 
um, uh, another institute of learning also in Santa and at that place also he studied under another uh, um, a number of well-known scholars amongst them the well-known Imam Al-Hafidh Ibn Ahmad Al-Hakami Al-Hafidh Al-Hakami Al-Hafidh Al-Hakami is well-known he has his book Ma'arij Al-Qubul and so many other works he has on Aqidah and when Shaykh Rabi speaks about this particular he died when he was 35 years old Al-Hafidh Al-Hakami died when he was 35 years old and his his works are, are, are well known amongst them Ma'arij Al-Qubul and Al-Hafidh Al-Hakami Shaykh Rabi speaks about him he says that if he was alive and had he uh, reached our time then he would have been the Ibn Taymiyyah of our time and he also studied under Al-Hafidh Al-Hakami's brother Muhammad Al-Hakami and he also studied under uh, Al-Shaykh Al-Allama Al-Muhaddith Ahmad Ibn Yahya Al-Najmi Rahimahullah as well as studying under Muhammad Aman Al-Jami and he studied Aqidah with Sheikh Muhammad Aman Rahimahullah and he also studied Fiqh Zad Al-Mustaqni' and others under Sheikh Faqih Muhammad Saghir Khamis or Khumayis depending on how it's pronounced and he studied also under many other scholars in the Arabic language and Balagha and its sciences and in 1380 at the end of 1380 he completed his studies at Al-Ma'had Al-Ilmi in Samita and in 1381 which is approximately 1960 he joined the faculty of Sharia in Riyadh and he continued studying there for approximately one and a half to two months at which time al Jamia Islamiyah in Medina Nabawiyah opened so Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi Hafidhahullah Ta'ala he transferred his studies from al Riyadh to al Jamia al Islamiyah in al, uh, the faculty of Sharia and he studied there for four years graduating in the year 1384 and he graduated with uh, top marks from amongst the scholars that he studied with when he was in al Jamia Islamiyah was the Al-Allama, the Mufti Al-Aam, Mamlak Arabiya Saudiya, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Abdullah Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah, and he studied Al-Aqidah Al-Tahawiyah under him, as well as some other books. And he also studied under the Muhaddith, the Allama, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Nasir Adin Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, and he studied Hadith and Asanid under him. He also studied under the Allama, the Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Ibn Muhammad Al-Abbad, he studied fiqh with him for three years from the book Bidayat al-Mujtahid of Ibn Rushd and he also studied under the well-known Imam the author of, of Adwa al-Bayan Muhammad Amin al-Shanqiti the one who they said was a, a resemblance of the Salaf in our era and he studied Tafsir with him and Usul al Fiqh with him for four years. He studied Al Aqidah with Salih al Iraqi and he studied the sciences of Hadith and Mustalah with Sheikh Al Muhaddith Abdul Ghaffar Hassan al Hindi. After having graduated from Jamia Islamiyya, he continued his studies and then he completed his masters from another university Malik Abdulaziz University in the the Mecca branch and he completed his masters there in 1397 and he had a well-known book that he had written that was Bain al-Imamain Muslim with Darakutni he was making a, a discussion between Imam Muslim and Imam Darakutni and then he completed his PhD in the year 1400 Hijri and at the same university and he also came out with top marks then and that was when he did a checking of the book Al-Nukat Al-Kitab Ibn Salah uh, the book which is by Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani after that time he returned back to Medina to Jam Islamiyah where he became a teacher of Hadith and its sciences and he took charge after that of the uh, Qism As-Sunnah in the higher studies 
And then this biography uh, mentions that the Sheikh is well known for his humble character and his uh, humble, uh, the, the humble way in which he uh, keeps himself and lives and the way he dresses and what he drives or is driven around in and that he doesn't like excessiveness and he spends his time reading hadith and in and engaging in learning the sunnah and warning against innovations and the people of innovations this is much of what he spends his time doing hafizahullah ta'ala he loves the salafi students of knowledge and he honors them and he is and he and he treats them well and he tries his best to fulfill their every need when he's able to whether that be by himself or even by his wealth his house remains open for the students of knowledge and there is hardly a day or a time where the sheikh has his breakfast lunch or dinner alone and he always seems to be asking about his students and sometimes uh, he calls them actually i remember when the sheikh was calling some of his students uh, people young uh, young people who phoned them up and asked them how they were if you hadn't seen them he is uh, very keen on calling the people to the book and to the sunnah and to the way and to the belief to the aqidah of the salaf and he has a severe desire to defend the sunnah and the aqidah of the salaf and there are little there are few people like him in, in, in our time in the way that he uh, defends fiercely the way of the Salaf and the Aqeedah of the Salaf al-Salih, day and night. The Shaykh has many works that he has written. And there are a lot to be uh, uh, more uh, than can be mentioned in one sitting. But here, just as a taster, there, there, are, there are mention of 30 of them. And there are so many more than that. بين الإمامين مسلم والدار قطني النكت على كتاب ابن الصلاح that were these were two books I mentioned already his masters and his PhD that were published uh, the checking of the book المدخل إلى الصحيح الحاكم's book and a checking of the book التوصل والوصيلة of Shaykh Rastab ibn Taymiyyah his well-known book which is translated into English and available on the internet, Manhajul Anbiya fi Dawati ila Allah, fihi al hikmatu wal aql, the way of the prophets in calling to Allah, that is the way of wisdom and intelligence. And that book is uh, something which every Salafi should keep on reading and return to over and over again. And it shouldn't be the case that any Salafi in this era hasn't read that book at least once. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala gave us the tawfiq. Uh, to be able to sit with Sheikh Rabi in approximately 2001 uh, to, to, until 2002 or 2003 and the Sheikh was explaining his own book and I was able to translate that book, the, the Sheikh's explanation alongside him in those evenings, those gatherings which lasted approximately two years in which we completed that book with him. Also the Sheikh's book Manhaju Ahl Sunnah Fi Naqdir Rijal Wal Kutubi Wat Tawa'if the way of Ahl Sunnah in disparaging narrators and books and groups. Taqseem al Hadith ila Sahih wa Hasan wa Da'if. Discussing the different types of hadiths. And that was a refutation upon Abdul Fattah, Abu Ghudda, and Muhammad Awama. Another book, Kashf Mawqif al Ghazali min al Sunnah wa Ahliha. Uncovering or unveiling the position of Al Ghazali. From the Sunnah and its people, meaning the the more recent Ghazali, the one who wrote the the, the Sira, the Mu'tazili. Sad Udwan al Mulhidin wa Hukm al Istiana bi Ghayr al Muslimin, blocking the enmity of the the aggression of the atheists and the ruling of seeking help from other than the Muslims. Tenthly, Makanat al al Hadith, the status of the people of Hadith. Eleventh, Manhajul Imam Muslim fi Tartibi Sahihihi, the way or the methodology that Imam Muslim chose to to place his Sahih, Sahih Muslim in, in which order to, that he placed it. 
Twelfthly, was a discussion with Salman al awda the, the innovator, Ahlul Hadith, whom at Ta'ifatul Mansura and Najia. Ahlul Hadith, they are at Ta'ifatul Mansura and the saved sect because Salman Auda in those days in the early 90s he was trying to say that there are two different groups one is Ta'ifat al-Mansura and one is, one is Al-Firqat al-Najiyah and that was his way of trying to separate between the ulama and saying that you know us ones who know about the politics and those are the ones who know about uh, the rulings on fiqh and ibadat he has a well-known uh, booklet Containing 20 hadith, Mudakira fil hadith in Nabawi, very beneficial small booklet, 20 hadith in it with explanation, basic book which every student of knowledge should attempt to get hold of and read and learn. Adwa Islamiya ala aqidat Sayyid Qutb wa Fikrihi, an Islamic spotlight upon the beliefs of Sayyid Qutb and his ideology. 15. Mata'in Sayyid Qutb fi ashabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Examples of where Sayyid Qutb spoke ill of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 16. Al-Awasim mimma fi Qutb Sayyid Qutb bin Al-Qawasim. A protection from, that, from the back-breaking matters found in the books of Sayyid Qutb. These are literal translations, but these uh, in Arabic, these titles are formulated often to have some type of a, a, a rhyme to them and the meaning is intended very often Al-Haddul Fasil Bain Al-Haqqi Wal Batil a dividing line or differentiating line between truth and falsehood that was a discussion that he had with Bakr Abu Zayd Rahimahullah 18 Mujazafat Al-Haddad the uh, the going beyond bounds of Al-Haddad this is a very important book especially in light of the youth, the foolish youth of today who have begun to speak ill of the ulama very boldly and bravely, resembling the way of the al-haddad. Al-mahajjat al-bayda fi himayat al-sunnat al-gharra The clear white path in protecting the pure sunnah. 20. Jama'a wahida la jama'at wa siratun wahidun la asharat there is one jama'a, not many. There is one path, not tens of them. And this was a discussion that he had with a Sheikh Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq Hadahullah, the uh, spiritual leader of this Kuwaiti organization. What's it called again? Ahiya wa Tarath. Jama'at Ahiya wa Tarath. And then Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq tried to respond to Sheikh Rabi. So Sheikh Rabi gave him another lesson. Al Nasr al Aziz al Rad al Wajiz. And he uh, pointed out the errors in his in his response. At Ta'asub at Dhamim wa Atharihi. This is a very important book, in, especially particularly in today's climate, which is uh, dispraised um, Ta'asub bigotry and its uh, and its effects. This book is a must. Everyone should read that book and. Uh, question themselves with regards to what they are doing with the knowledge that they have learned and are they just blindly claiming, clinging on to people because of the friends that they are hanging about with a ta'asub al dhamim blameworthy bigotry uh, holding on to a sheikh with, with anything and everything despite the number and numerous amount of errors that the ulama have pointed out Bayan Fasad al Mi'yar, Hiwar Ma Hizbi Mustatir, a book that the Sheikh wrote at 24, at Tankil, Bimafi Tawdih al Malibari, Min al Abatil. There was this one man, al Malibari, he has some misunderstandings about hadith and its sciences, and the Sheikh um, explained those errors there and clarified them. Dahd Abatil, Musa al Dawesh, this was a teacher in the Islamic University of Medina. And he began to say some strange things. And he was previously with the Salafis in his speech. He began to differ. They, they advised him. He didn't take the advice. The Shaykh Rabi wrote this book against him, Dahat Abatil Musa Dawesh, destroying the falsification, the falsehood of Musa Dawesh. Ishaq Abatil Abdul Latif Bashmil, shedding. The falsehood of Abdul Latif Bashmil. Abdul Latif Bashmil is also a Haddadi.
of the way of Al Haddad, and this book is also important in order to understand the behavior of the foolish youth of today, the way that they've been behaving with many of the well known, firmly grounded scholars of Islam in, the, in all regions of the world. In Qidat al Shahb al Salafiyya, ala awkar Adnan al Khalafiyya, this was an, a, a reputation Shaykh Rabi wrote about Adnan al Ur'ur. Al Nasiha, he al Mas'uliyat al Mushtaraka fil Amal al Da'wi advice is a universal responsibility or a, uh, a joint responsibility in giving da'wah 29 al kitab wa sunnah athruhuma wa makanatuhuma wa dharurat ilayhima fi iqamati at ta'lim fi madarisina the book and the sunnah it's their effects their status and their dire need in establishing education in our schools hukm al islam في من سب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو طعن في شمول رسالته the Islamic ruling on the person who cursed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or spoke ill or disparaged the, um, uh, the, the, the universal message the universality of his message صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Sheikh has many other books which are available to view on his website, rabi'ah.net. As for the praise of the ulama of this time and the recent past from those who have passed away, for Shaykh Rabi, then it is many and too much to be mentioned in one sitting. But from them, I will mention some. And that is, firstly, from the well known Imam, Al Lama Ubaidillah al Rahmani al Mubarak 40, Rahimahullah. The author of Mir'at al-Mafatih, Sharh Mishkat al-Masabih, from the, one of the well-known scholars of India who died in the year 1414. And he wrote, after Shaykh Rabi had asked him for an ijaza. Ijaza is uh, permission or to um, acceptance of the Shaykh to designate his books or his chain to his student. So he said that our brother, in, uh, in, for the sake of Allah, Al-Alim, Al-Nabil, the noble scholar, Al-Fadil, Al-Jalil, describing him in these words, as Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi Umair Al-Madkhali, from, this, from the uh, town of Jaradiya, from Samita, he begins to speak about him, he has requested an ijaza from me, and he... Uh, be riwayat al hadith anni to narrate hadith from me and his chain has reached the imams of hadith from the well known six books of hadith and others and he wrote to me that he had studied in al madrasa al salafiya in samita and in al ma'had al ilmi in samita and al jami islamiya in medina and that he took his certification in the year 1385 from Medina and then 1396 his masters and then his PhD in 1400 in this university and that he had and that he had studied um, in Al Masjid Al Nabawi from under Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz listening to hearing much of Sahih Al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and a portion of uh, Jami Al Tirmidhi from him and that he spent much time and benefited a lot from Sheikh Muhammad al-Nasiruddin al-Albani and also Sheikh Hamad ibn Muhammad al-Ansari and others from the well-known major scholars. And then he begins to say that he was sent from, once he graduated from Jamia Islamiyya and before he took did his masters, he was sent to Al-Jami'a al-Salafiyya, the Salafi University in Benares in India as a teacher on behalf of Jamia Islamiyya. And whenever I went, the Sheikh is saying, whenever I went to a Jamia Salafiyya in Banaris, uh, then this Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi would come to me, come and sit with me, and we would discuss knowledgeable issues. And whenever he came to my town, Mubarak Four, he came many times. He would visit me in my house, and I found that he was um, a man of abundant knowledge and great virtue, and a person with with sound understanding and an upright character upon the way of a Salaf al-Salih. 
in his beliefs and his actions, in his following the book and the sunnah, giving victory to them, defending it and being harsh upon the people of innovations and desires, refuting the blind followers. So may Allah bless him and his knowledge and allow the Muslims to enjoy his uh, uh, a long life. And enjoy his long life. This is a dua for his long life from the Shaykh. And the Shaykh wrote that in 1401, 1980. Shaykh Ibn Baz, we mentioned some of his words in favor of Shaykh Rabi last week at the end of last week's uh, lesson. Um, where Shaykh Ibn Baz was asked about Shaykh Rabi Ibn Hadi and Madkhali and Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami. Shaykh Ibn Baz says, Bi khusus sahibay al Fadila. As Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami was Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al Madkhali with regards to these two honorable scholars. Kilahuma min Ahl Sunnah. Both of them are from Ahl Sunnah. Wa ma'rufani ladayya. And both of them are well known to me. Bil ilmi wal fadl wal aqidah tis saliha. With knowledge and virtue and correct aqidah. And then he mentioned that Sheikh Muhammad Aman had died in such and such a night in Sha'ban in, in that same year. And he said, فَأُوْسِي بِالْإِسْتِفَادَةِ مِنْ كُتُبِهِمَا And I advise that people should benefit from their books. And another number of examples. This particular book that I'm reading from is available on Sheikh Rabi's website. It's called أَثْنَاءُ الْبَدِيعِ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَى الشَّيْخِ Rabi. Um, clear praise from the ulama upon Sheikh Rabi. This was written and compiled by one of Sheikh Rabi's students, Khalid of the Fairy, well known, he t- uh, a strong student of knowledge, who completed his PhD. He's from Kuwait, and he mentioned a number of uh, statements. And then he himself, Sheikh Khalid of the Fairy, says, "And I heard with my own ears from Sheikh Ibn Baz, addressing Sheikh Rabi, saying, 'Ya Sheikh Rabi, rud ala kulli man yukhtir.'" Refute, he said, Oh Shaykh Rabi, refute everyone who errs, makes a mistake. Ibn Baz, Rud Ali, even if Ibn Baz made a mistake, refute him. Ibn Ibrahim, Rud Ali, even if Ibn Ibrahim, who's a Shaykh Ibn Baz's Shaykh, the Mufti that was before Ibn Baz, refute him. And then he began to praise him greatly, and Allah is a witness over what I say. And Sheikh Khalid al Dhafiri, Hafidullah, he says that, and Sheikh Ibn Baz allowed and gave permission for Sheikh Rabi to teach in his masjid in Mecca just before his passing away by a few months, uh, proving that Sheikh, Sheikh Ibn Baz was pleased with Sheikh Rabi until the end of his life. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Nasir al Din al Albani, he was asked, about people who cause doubt with regards to the da'wah of a sheikh, the two sheikhs, Rabi' ibn Hadi al Madkhali and Muqbil ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, Sheikh Rabi' and Sheikh Muqbil. Sheikh al Albani said, Without doubt, we praise Allah Azza wa Jal that He has given for this, uh, this da'wah, which is based upon the book and the sunnah, upon the way of the Salaf al Salih, callers. Uh, many callers from around the Islamic world standing up with the obligation and there are uh, the obligation few of which have been able to stand up with it so taking uh, um, he says so uh, dispraising or speaking ill of these two sheikhs a sheikh Rabi and a sheikh Muqbil these two callers to the book and the sunnah and that to which and to which the salaf and salih were upon and uh, fighting against those who differ from this correct manhaj this is with uh, without doubt either this comes this emanates from a person who is ignorant or a person of desires And also he said, and what I wanted to say was that what I have seen in the writings of 
the uh, a doctor. Doctor in Arabic, they refer to a PhD graduate. What I have seen in the writings of a, a sheikh, a doctor, Rabi' that they are beneficial, mufida. Wala adhkur anni ra'itu lahu khata'an. And I do not remember that I found one mistake, any mistakes in his work. Wa khurujan an al manhaj alladhi nahnu naltaqi ma'ahu wa yaltaqi ma'ana fihi. And I didn't find any point where he left the methodology that both of us come together in or upon. And in the cassette tape Al Muwazanat, Bid'atul Asr, Sheikh Al Albani says, he says, and um, abridging, I say that the carrier of the flag of Al Jarhwa Ta'deel today, in our time, in truth, is our brother, the Dr. Rabi'i. And those people who refute him, they do not refute him with any knowledge at all. The knowledge is with him. And also he said in his book, Sifat al-Salah, page 68, when he spoke about Al-Ghazali, meaning the recent one, Shaykh al-Albani said, and many people from the, from the people of knowledge and virtue, may Allah reward them, refuted Al-Ghazali. And they detailed their speech about him with regards to his confusion and his uh, misguidance. And from the best of what I came across was the refutation of our companion, Dr. Rabi ibn Hadi al Madkhali, in the Al Majalla, Al Majalla al Afghaniya, number 9 to 11. Shaykh al Albani, rahimahullah, also um, the book that one of the books that were previously mentioned, Al Awasim, Mimma fi Kutub, Sayyid Kutub min al Qawasim, the protectors. Uh, or protection from the backbreakers, the backbreaking back matters found in Sayyid Qutb's books. That book by Sheikh Rabi was found in Sheikh al-Albani's library. Sheikh al-Albani had a copy of Sheikh Rabi's book, Al-Awasim, Mimma fi Kutub, Sayyid Qutb min al-Qawasim. Sheikh, Sheikh al-Albani had written a note on the back cover, or inside back cover of his version, of, of his copy. And Sheikh Rabi found out about this writing, and inshallah, there's no problem, no harm in mentioning how he found out about it. It's approximately 1998, 1999, and uh, this is an experience that I had with Sheikh Rabi, actually. I used to live next to the Sheikh, and I used to just attempt to pray any prayer that I was able to pray in the Sheikh's Masjid. And I just wanted to walk with the Sheikh from the Masjid to the house. It was a short walk, maybe uh, 100 meters or 200 meters. My intention was pray and just walk with the Sheikh silently and see if any benefit comes out from the Sheikh. So one particular occasion we prayed Dhuhr and I was walking with the Sheikh together to his house. And when we got to the Sheikh's door, this is where I would normally part from the Sheikh and go home, there was a and not a third person that turned up. He said, Sheikh, I just drove from Jordan and I'm on the way to my home country, Oman. But I study in Jordan and I'm on holiday and I, want, and I came to visit you. The Sheikh said to him, come in. So that was my, my entrance. So I have, alhamdulillah, I managed to get in with this visitor. So now there were three of us in the room. This person, he says, Sheikh, yesterday or two days ago, I was sitting with Ali Hassan in Sheikh Al Albani's library. And we came across your book, Al Awasim, Mimma fi Kutub Sayyid Kutub min Al Qawasim. And we read, we saw at the back of the book, Sheikh Al Albani had written some words with his own handwriting praising that book from you, uh, by you. So Sheikh Rabi was, was amazed and he was excited. He said, what did he say? What did he write? And then he began to dictate to him. He's, he's told him what he had said. Salah Sheikh was really excited. Mashallah, he's really excited. I remember that day clearly. He said to the brother, write it down. So the, the brother, he wrote down what he remembered from his memory. He wrote down. And eventually, 
that writing reached the Sheikh and it's available now in Sheikh Al-Bani's library after he passed away he donated it to Jamia Islamiyah and it's a section of the Islamic University's library is Sheikh Al-Bani's library is there as a separate section and this book is there available and that writing obviously is still there so it's the actual writing, the, the correct writing, that brother had narrated it as closely as possible and it's, it reads, I'll read the correct version, it reads كُلَّمَا رَدَتَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدْ كُتُبْ حَقٌ وَسَوَابٌ Everything that you have refuted Sayyid Qutb with is true and correct. وَمِنْهُ يَتَبَيَّنُ لِكُلِّ قَارِئٍ مُسْلِمٍ And from this point it is clear to every Muslim reader على شيء من الثقافة الإسلامية who has, who has a small amount of Islamic knowledge أن سيد قطب لم يكن على معرفة بالإسلام بأصوله وفروعه that سيد قطب had no knowledge or understanding of Islam neither in its fundamentals nor in its branches فجزاك الله خيرا أيها الأخ الربيع uh, so may Allah reward you with good oh and he didn't use his name Rabi, he said Ar Rabi, this is Ar Rabi, this is using it as a as a description, as a wasf, a adjective. Rabi means refreshing. Something which is something which is refreshing. Oh ref, my refreshing brother, Al Akh Ar Rabi. Ala qiyamika biwajib al bayan for having fulfilled the obligation upon of, of clarification, wal kashf and jahlihi and unveiling his ignorance, one hirafihi and Islam and his misguidance from Islam. Incidentally, when the brother had written that down on that piece of paper, and it wasn't exactly these words, but it was very similar, uh, then the Sheikh asked me to get some copies, and then I went away uh, and came back after Asr. Uh, the shops at that time had closed, so after Asr I came back with uh, those three or four or five, six copies, how many copies I could get for one real, gave to the Sheikh, maybe five, six copies. And then, at that same the second sitting now, because I had the, I had a second excuse to visit the Sheikh was after Asr, because I had the papers to give to him. So when I was sitting with the Sheikh that second time, he picked up the phone and phoned Ali Hassan. May Allah guide him. He said, it reached me that this writing from Sheikh Al-Albani uh, was found at the back of this book. And Sheikh didn't give him much time to speak. He said, if I had authority... I would have whipped your back when you knew that Sheikh al-Albani had this writing in the back of this book and you didn't make it known. Do you think, he said to him, do you think I'm doing all of this work and all this writing for nothing? Sheikh al-Albani's one statement outweighs all of my works and the youth, the youth are being uh, trialed and being misguided and all it takes is for Sheikh al-Albani's support to show the, the, the correctness of, of my works and he said then he, then he told him I want that that page with uh, with me or to me within 24 hours which didn't actually happen but sooner or later Alhamdulillah the Sheikh managed to to get it and and it spread and you can see a copy of the Sheikh's handwriting available on Salafi Publications website I remember seeing a scan when I saw the scan on the website I was afraid that this was that brother's handwriting that I had written in the Sheikh's house that day. So I went through uh, my papers and heaps of papers and I found that one and I compared it and alhamdulillah it was different. It was the actual, it was actually Sheikh Al-Bari's handwriting that was on the website. Uh, moving on, Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Saleh al uthaymin's praise of Sheikh Al-Bani. He said about him, as for as Sheikh Rabi, I do not know anything about him except good. He is a person of the Sunnah and a person of Hadith. There was a lecture that she, another time. She, there was a lecture that Sheikh Rabi had given, and after that, Sheikh Uthaymin uh, had given a talk. Then he said. Sheikh Uthaymin says, We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having made it possible for our brother, the Dr. Rabi ibn Hadi al Madkhali, to visit this area of ours so that 
that which was hidden from some would become known and that our brother may Allah give him success and give us success is upon Salafiyyah and the way of the Salaf and I do not mean by Salafiyyah by a particular Hizb or a particular group opposing others amongst the Muslims but what I mean by Salafiyyah is that he is upon the way of the Salaf in his manhaj particularly in his actualizing Tawheed and rejecting that which opposes it and we know and we all know that Tawheed is the foundation of the messengership that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all his messengers alayhi salatu wasalam with and then he said and the visit of our brother as Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi to this area particularly to our town Unayza without a doubt shall have its effects and many people shall realize that which was once hidden to them because of the ongoing disparaging the the propaganda against him and the loose tongues that have been set out against him and how many people are there that feel sorry for what they said about the scholars once they know that they were upon the truth and then one of the attendees in the tape he says here's a question about the books of a Sheikh Rabi so Sheikh Uthaymin says what is apparent is that there is no need for this question as Imam Ahmad was asked about Ishaq ibn Rahawi may Allah have mercy on all of them and then Imam Ahmad said my likes are asked about Ishaq rather Ishaq is to be asked about me and I spoke in the beginning of my lecture about what I know about Shaykh Rabi may Allah give him success and I continue to remain upon what I mentioned until this time and his coming to our place and giving his speech that has reached me without a doubt is something which increases a person in love for him and in dua in his, for his, in his favor also Shaykh uh, Athaymi was asked about the books of Sayyid Qutb and that there were some um, uh, questions with regards to what people had said about him about what is found in his books and he says, Shaykh Uthaymin says that I haven't looked into the books of Sayyid Qutb much and I don't know anything about him but the scholars have written about him and his, particularly his book Dilal al-Quran and then and they noticed many errors in his book on tafsir like that which is written by a sheikh abdul ad dawish may Allah have mercy upon him and our brother a sheikh rabi al madkhali has many notes and points against him in his tafsir and other books so whoever wishes to go back to that should go back to that also sheikh Uthaymin, he said he was asked what is your advice to someone who bans or stops the, the tapes of Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi saying that these tapes they spread fitna and they praise the leaders of Saudi Arabia he says our, my, our opinion is that this is wrong this is a great mistake a Sheikh Rabi' is from the scholars of the Sunnah from the people of good his aqidah is sound and his manhaj is upright but when he spoke against the heads of some people meaning some parties from the uh, uh, later from the later ones later scholars or not later scholars from the later uh, heads of meaning he's referring obviously to Sayyid Qutb then they began to speak about him with all sorts of uh, false descriptions And he was asked, is Sheikh Rabi' upon a way, 
in opposition to the manhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he said, Ma a'lamu annahu mukhalif. I do not know that he is in opposition. A Shaykh Rabi has been praised by the people of knowledge of our time. I do not know anything about him except good. Also, Shaykh Salah al Fawzan. He mentioned and he looked at many of Shaykh Rabi's books. He actually wrote the introduction to Shaykh Rabi's book, Al Manhaj al Anbiya fi Dawati al Allah, which we spoke about earlier. Um, in one particular cassette, which is known as Al Asilat al Sawidiya, the questions from Sweden, he said, and likewise from the uh, forefront scholars that have a hand in da'wah if, uh, from the forefront of those people giving da'wah are Fadilat al-Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad Fadilat al-Shaykh Rabi' Hadi and also Fadilat al-Shaykh Salih al-Suhaymi Fadilat al-Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami these people they have well known efforts in giving da'wah and ikhlas and refuting those people who are upon misguidance in the da'wah away from the correct path so it is an obligation that their tapes be spread and their lessons be benefited from because there is a great benefit therein for the Muslims and other praise that he also mentioned about Sheikh Rabi Sixthly, from the scholars that praised him was the Allama, the Sheikh Muhaddith Muqbil ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, the well known scholar of Yemen. Rahmatullah alayhi. He was asked, as occurs in Al As'ila al Hadramiyya, scholars from Hadramaut, uh, questions from Hadramaut, what is your opinion about those people who say that a Sheikh Rabi is? Mutahawir, careless. He said, a Sheikh Rabi has a good experience with knowing the reality of the current affairs because he lived with the Ikhwan al Muflisin, referring to the group, the political group Ikhwan al Muslimin, for a long time. And praise be to Allah, he is the best person to correct and to solve their issues and he, he refutes the innovators and I ask Allah to protect him and preserve him Shaykh Muqbil Rahimahullah was also asked as comes in the tape Al-As'ilat al-Sunniya Li'allamat al-Dayar al-Yamaniya Al-As'ilat al-Shabab al-Ta'if Questions from the youth on from Taif asked Sheikh Mukbil these questions. He says, from the best people who have knowledge of the groups and the hidden aspects of the groups in this time is our brother Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi. May Allah preserve him. And whoever says, and whoever Sheikh Rabi says. That the, about whoever Shaykh Rabi says that he is his be, that he is a partisan, then this, then that person's partisanship will become known one day. You will remember this because a person at the beginning of his affair, he is hidden, he hides his innovation, and then, and he wishes that people do not know about him. So when he gets strength. Then he begins to, and he gets followers, and he is not harmed by the innovation when he spreads it. Then he his matter becomes known. So I advise you to read the books of, to read his books and to benefit from them. May Allah preserve him. He said also, Sheikh Mukbil said, praise be to Allah, Ahl Sunnah, they uncover the deep plots and the ways of the people and Sheikh Rabi he says Sheikh Rabi 
never will, a, will, will there cease to be a group of people from my ummah upon the truth, not being harmed by those who oppose them or abandon them until the command of Allah comes, as Sheikh Rabi in the land of the of the, of the Haramain and Najd, by the permission, by the praise be to Allah, He uncovers the plots of the of the Hizbiyin, and He clarifies that which they are upon. And He said in another place, and I advise the brothers to benefit from the books of our brother Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi, for he is by the permission of Allah has an insight with regards to the partisans of the Hizbiyin. And he removes their Hizbiya with tweezers. Some people who wrote footnotes to Al-Kashaf, Zamakhshari's Kashaf, the book of Tafsir, they say that they removed, they discovered his i'tizar, his being a Mu'tazila, with tweezers. And this man, he takes out people's Hizbiya with tweezers. And I advise people to benefit from his books and to benefit from his tapes. And also, Tuhfatul Qareeb wal Mujib. This is a set of questions, a collection of questions and answers with Sheikh Mukbil. Question 75. He said, And I advise people to read the books of our brother for the sake of Allah, Rabi ibn Hadi, Jama, the book. Of our brother Rabi bin Hadi, Jama'a Wahida La Jama'at Wa Siratun Wahid La Asharat. Because it is a book which in which he sufficed and fulfilled. Question 123 from that collection. What we advise is that the people of knowledge should be sent around different places if they are able and that they should be traveled to also the likes of a sheikh al albani a sheikh ibn baz a sheikh abdul muhsin al abad a sheikh rabi ibn hadi a sheikh ibn uthaymin if they are able to tra- travel to them they should travel to them and if they are not able to travel to them then they should learn from them by way of telephone and by uh, by letters Question 135. When he was asked about the scholars that uh, should be returned to, he said, "A Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi Madkhali is an ayah min ayatillah fi ma'rifat al hisbiyin, and a sign from the signs of Allah in having knowledge of the hisbiyin." He said, "An ayah min ayatillah fi ma'rifat al hisbiyin." Question 140, who do you advise us from the scholars of Saudi Arabia to take our knowledge from? And we wish you men- that you mentioned some, we hope you can mention some names. As for those people that I advise you to take knowledge from, that I know are a Sheikh Abdulaziz ibn Baz, may Allah preserve him, and Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymeen, may Allah preserve him, and a Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi, may Allah preserve him, a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad. May I preserve him, a Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan, has been mentioned with much good, even though I do not know him. And you should seek advice from Sheikh Ibn Baz because he has more knowledge about this, and I have been away from that country for some time. Question 144. When he was asked about, when he was speaking about Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq, Okay, we'll skip that one. Question 162. Uh, he said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك Never will there cease to be a group of my ummah uppermost upon the truth, not being harmed by those who abandon them or are treacherous towards them, until the command of Allah comes about and they are in that state. And from amongst those people from the scholars are a Sheikh Ibn Baz, may Allah preserve him, a Sheikh Al Albani, may Allah preserve him, a Sheikh Salih Al Fawzan, a Sheikh Rabi Ibn Hadi, a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abbad, may Allah preserve them. In that same place, that same book he said under the under the title Min Wara'i Tafjeed fi Ardul Haramain. 
behind the bombings in the lands of, of the two harams, he said, uh, Sheikh Mukbil advised the people of Kuwait with the following words, I also advise you to call our brother Rabi ibn Hadi al-Madkhali to visit Kuwait because uh, so that he can clarify to you the misguidance of Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq and the misguidance of the Sururis and the Qutubis. And in his introduction to the book written by Sheikh Muhammad al-Imam, Hafidhullah, Tanweer al-Dhulumat, he says in that book, and from the scholars of Ahl sunnah the noble ones at, in this time, that are standing in the faces of the people of falsehood are a Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al Albani, Rahimahullah, a Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, Rahimahullah, wa Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi, and others. This was the level of praise even towards the end of the Sheikh's life because he only died, he died soon after Sheikh, Sheikh ibn Baz and Sheikh al Albani. Up to that time, he was mentioning Sheikh Rabi to be returned to for knowledge. Praise mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Subail, praise mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al-Banna Rahimahullah Sheikh al-Banna he used to live in Jeddah and died a few years ago in his mid-90s he was a teacher of Sheikh Rabi he used to say to us that in Medina I was Sheikh Rabi's teacher but now he has become my teacher He said in his introduction to the book Jama'a Wahid Allah Jama'at that Dr. Rabi' ibn Hadi Madkhali A'arifuhu min yawmi kana taliban bil Jami'a Islamiyya I know him from the time that he was a student in Jami'a Islamiyya He was very keen in knowing the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf al-Salih and the way of their manhaj and their da'wah to the straight path and I went on a trip with him Along, along with the brother Abdurrahman Abdul Khaliq and Umar Suleiman Al Ashkar and a Sheikh Muhammad Aman Al Jami with some Sudanese students as well that were upon the same manhaj and we went to give da'wah in Sudan during the summer holidays and from amongst the best of those people who remained firm upon the path wa al-Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi al-Madkhali we ask Allah that he causes his firmness to to last to be everlasting and he has fulfilled and closed an uh, an, an area he has taken a, a a fort by defending the sunnah and clarifying the mistakes of those who erred with regards to the sunnah from that which we witness of virtue and the Shaykh continues to uh, to praise him in that way and he also said when he was asked about Shaykh Rabi is does Shaykh Rabi is Shaykh Rabi considered to be from the major scholars he said who in our time and those before him knows the reality of the callers like he knows who he says, who knows the proofs with their details? He doesn't speak about any person except with proof. And for this reason I say about Rabi' Hadi that he is like Yahya ibn Ma'in of our time. I say Rabi' Hadi is Yahya ibn Ma'in of our time. Yahya ibn Ma'in is well known from the well known scholars of Hadith from the teachers of Imam, uh, sheikhs of Imam al-Bukhari. They said that Yahya ibn Ma'in he wrote a million hadiths with his own hand. Kataba alf, alf hadith. He said, أَعْرَفُ nas bil rijal bid dalil. He is the person who has most knowledge about the people with, their, with proofs. Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi, may Allah preserve him. Uh, preserve his intelligence and preserve his memory. May Allah reward him with much good and make him firm and keep him until the people who falsely wear the thobe of Salafiyya has become, has, is removed. 
also praise of Sheikh uh, Al Ahmed ibn Yahya al Najmi. He was he said once when he refuted Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi al Misri, Al Sheikh Rabi, Rajul al Mujahid al Jazahu Allahu Khairan, wa an aghbituhu bi jihadihi fi nashr al Sunnah. Sheikh Rabi is a man who is a mujahid, a striver. May Allah reward him much good. And I am jealous of his striving in spreading the sunnah and defending uh, and and um, rejecting and refuting the innovations and their people and his great concern that he has for the sunnah and its spread and its spreading with any, with, in every means that he has. I ask Allah to reward him for that with a much with a great reward and for that reason and for that reason I and all of Ahl Sunnah love him Shaykh Ahmed Najmi was asked also what is your opinion about someone who says I do not give Credence to Sheikh Zayd al Madkhali and Rabi al Madkhali. Uh, I do not think that they are from the ulama. I don't think anything. I don't take any knowledge from them. I only take from Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz. What is your advice, Sheikh Ahmad Najmi, rahmatullah alayhi, He says we ask Allah to guide them and to bring them back to their to right mindedness. For indeed, a Sheikh Rabi and Sheikh Zayd, the two Madkhalis. Both of them are from the Salafi scholars, the advisors. It is an obligation to give them credence for that reason. That they should be known. That should not be spoken ill of. Because whoever speaks ill of them is speaking ill of the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that they carry. Oh. Sheikh Ali Nasr al-Faqihi, Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri, Sheikh Saleh al-Suhaymi, Abdul Aziz al-Rajihi, Dr. Jabir al-Tayyib ibn Ali, Sheikh Hassan Abdul Wahab al-Banna, all of those which we don't actually have time to go through. But a nice conclusion written by Sheikh Khalid al-Dhafayri, Hafidhullah, he says over here, It is as a Sheikh Abdul Latif Al Sheikh said, Min Adati Ahlil Bid'a, Ida Aflasu, Min Al Hujja, Wadakat Bihim Subul, Tarawahu Bi'ibi Ahl Sunnati, Wadamihim, Omadhi, and Fosihim. From the ways of the people of innovation, when they become bankrupt of any proofs, and they have nowhere to go, then they seek ease by speaking ill of Ahl Sunnah and dispraising them. And they begin to praise themselves. He mentions a narration in Tabakat al Hanabila from Abu Zura. Ida ra'ayt al Kufi yatanu ala Sufyan al Thawri wa za'ida fala tashukku annahu rafidi. If you see, Abu Zura said, if you see the person from Kufa speaking ill of Sufyan al Thawri or za'ida, then have no doubt that that person is a rafidi. And if you see the Shami, the person from Sham speaking ill of Makhul and Awza'i, have no doubt that he is a Nasibi. And if you see a person from Khurasan speaking ill of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, have no doubt that he is a Murji'i. And if you have, if you see a person and have knowledge that all of these groups, all of them come together in hating Ahmad ibn Hanbal, because there is nobody except in his heart there is an arrow that he sent which they cannot free themselves from Naim ibn Hamad as occurs in Tariq Baghdad and Tariq Dimashq he said if you see a person from Iraq speaking ill of Ahmed ibn Hanbal then question his religion and if you see a person from Basra speaking about Wahab ibn Jarir then question his religion and if you see a person from Khurasan speaking ill of Ishaq ibn Rahoya then Question his religion. Meaning question him with regards to his faith. Abu Ja'far Muhammad ibn Harun al-Makhrami He said 
إذا رأيت الرجل يقع في أحمد بن حنبل فأعلم أنه مبتدع ضال If you see a person speaking ill of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, then know that he is a misguided innovator. Abu Hatim al-Razi, إذا رأيت الرازي وغيره وإذا رأيت الرازي وغيره يبغض أبا زرعة فأعلم أنه مبتدع. If you see a person from who is uh, a razi speaking ill or hating Abu Zur'a, ah, know that he is an innovator. Abu Hatim said, the sign of the people of bid of innovation is that they speak ill of the people of the Sunnah, Ahlul Athar. Abu Uthman al Sabuni, the great Imam, in his book Aqid al Salaf wa Ashab al Hadith, he said, Wa alamatu al bid'ah ala aliha badiya badiya tun zahira. وأظهر آياتها وعلاماتهم وأظهر آياتهم وعلاماتهم شدة معاداتهم لحملة أخبار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم واحتقارهم واستخفافهم بهم. He said the signs of the of innovations and the people of innovators are open and very clear and the greatest of their signs is their great hatred for the people who carry the narrations of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and they're belittling them and considering them low. And Abu Dawood, in his Ha'iya, uh, he says, وَلَا تَكُوا مِنْ قَوْمٍ تَلْهُوا بِدِينِهِمْ فَتَتَعَنُوا فِي أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ وَتَكْدَحُوا Do not be from those people who are playful about their religion, and then you speak ill and belittle the people of Hadith. And as Safarini, he said, وَلَسْنَا بِصَدَدِ ذِكْرِ مَنَاقِبِ أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ And we are not here to mention the many, um, the many virtues of the people of Hadith because their virtues are well known. They are too well known to be mentioned. And they are so many. And they are, their virtues are numerous. And whoever speaks ill of them, then he is خَسِيسٌ نَاقِسٌ He is a person who is lowly and belittled and and incomplete. وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَهُمْ فَهُوَ مِنْ حِزْبِ إِبْلِيسِ نَاقِصٌ And whoever hates them, then he is from the party of Iblis. So this, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is uh, where we uh, finish. And that was an example of the, uh, the attitude that we are expected to have with regards to the ulama of Ahlul Hadith, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. Actually, I was hoping to play uh, uh, some to some of Sheikh Rabi's advice that he gave this afternoon in his he has a he had an open sitting today um, after Asr in his house and the recording of that reached me hopefully inshallah we will be able to access that now inshallah and listen to a portion of it and translate inshallah if Allah makes it easy this one I haven't listened to it Previously, so translating it may not be as easy as the previous ones, though they weren't easy either. Okay, just going to continue just for a few minutes to listen to a portion of this advice that was given by Sheikh Rabi a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> الله يكرمه إذا أخلص لله سبحانه في طلبه لكلمة بعنوان نصائح وتوجيهات تعين على الثبات. This is the title of the talk was um, advice to help remaining firm. طيلة الشيخ العلامة المحدث. ربيع بن هادي المدخلي حفظه الله تعالى على أبنائه الطلاب والزوار بمنزله العامل بمكة المكرمة عصر الجمعة الثاني عشر من شهر شعبان عام أربعة وثلاثين وأربعمائة وألف 
من هجرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينفع بها الجميع أرحب الأخوة الكرام في هذا اللقاء الطيب وأسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجعل هذا الاجتماع طلبا لمرضات الله سبحانه وتعالى فإن صالب العلم الله يكرمه He says that the student of knowledge is honored by Allah. إذا أخلص لله سبحانه وتعالى. If he makes his niya pure for Allah's sake. في طلبه. Seeking knowledge. وأراد به وجه الله تبارك وتعالى. If it was done for seeking the face of Allah. وإن الملائكة لتضع جلحتها لطالب العلم. And the angels lower their wings for the student of knowledge. رضا بما يصنع. Out of pleasure for what he does. فاستشعروا هذه الأمور الإخلاص So bring about these feelings to your mind Bring these feelings to your mind when you are seeking knowledge Seeking the pleasure of Allah So that the angels do that in your favor as, a, as in pleasure of what you do Seeking knowledge has a lofty and high station What time is the ikama? That's now. We'll stop now, inshallah. Because uncle's there. Jazakallah khair, uncle. Okay, Allah wa alam wa sallallahumma ala alaviyya na ala sabi sallam. No, no, khalas finished. No, no, I'll send it out to one of them.